Now then, it's a bit variable out there. We just had some rain and some sun and then we got drizzle and so time to escape to the workshop and here's an interesting story. Now if you remember I fixed the battery on this AEG drill and it was lithium battery and replaced all the cells because basically they were worn out and wouldn't hold any current. Anyway, Owen sent me this. He said, that's the same, it's got Duff batteries. And there were two batteries with it. And I thought, oh great, yeah, I know how to fix that. But things are slightly different. So let's zoom in and um, we'll go through that. And then we'll talk about the fix. So this is the lithium battery that I fixed and these are the batteries that I got from the drill from Owen and you know thank you very much much appreciated always interested in stuff but look bigger smaller uh, to quote father Ted yeah no this is small and that is far away there. Anyway, um, so I thought, what's going on? Is it double the power? And then, this is what assumptions do for you. I'd assumed I knew what I was doing. NICAD. There you go. Now this explains quite a lot because... When, which way does it go? There we go. When I'd first looked at these, this drill, the terminals in there were really quite corroded on the, can't see, I assume it was the positive, but I might be wrong, but it was really corroded. I thought, what could cause that corrosion? And of course, it's these nickel cadmium batteries. So, what are we going to do about that? What I did with the other one yeah, is I took the NICADs out and I robbed some of these 2.5 amp hour um, LG 18650 cells from this pack now if you remember Lee, you remember Lee Rose and he was, he's been featured on several of my videos including the recent Solace Fix. Anyway he gave me some of these and so I've used five of these in this one and I know it's this one because I blacked out NICAD yeah, and it's lighter. So, but of course the thing with this is, there's no battery management card in there. So you've got to use your brain. And your brain goes, when it starts to lose a bit of power, stop and recharge it. And the other bit is, charge it on the bench power supply, where and limit the current for 150 milliamps, and limit the voltage to 20 volts and leave it on there for about 10 hours. That way you won't destroy these cells. If you keep going till the point where there's no power uh, to the drill, then you're going to set up um, all the problems you would get with unequal charge, and then you end up destroying the cells. So it's not for the contractor this fix. This is for the everyday pottering around, doing things, having, got, having time to um, uh, be aware of what's going on. I've seen people use battery drills. They just hammer them mercilessly and then when the BMS switches off they just put another battery on and keep going. And so those batteries are being 
deeply cycle down to the point where they switch off and then rapid charged up and then like that yeah and that's just a recipe for disaster anyway so that's the rant over for that one so we've tidied a few things out so the first thing to do is to remove this these screws and it's a torque screw and one of them from what I remember has got the stupid security pin in the middle and you know what I think about security screws yeah on pieces of equipment I bought this bit of equipment I should be able to take it apart no manufacturer should say no you can't it may be that if I take it apart the warranty is void but in a lot of things nowadays the warranty means nothing so let's get these apart right again from what I remember the top comes off they're actually quite nicely put together these there's the top okay and there's the NICADs the offending NICADs but again it's quite the nice, quite nicely put together. There we go. And it's interesting that the bottom of this pack is ventilated. I don't know whether you can see, but there's lots of little holes through there. I just dropped the screwdriver. So the only bit that we need from, we're going to zoom in on this because uh, you can see lots of things there. Where are we? There we are. Look at all that corrosion on those terminals. Yeah. But the only thing we do need from this is that terminal board there this bit here and of course we'll have to uh, tidy it up so what I'm doing here I'm assuming you can see yes you can is I'm just encouraging those spot welds to come apart okay put a screwdriver on there I'm having to hold this down now just Easy. I'm just turning the screwdriver doesn't want to play there we go okay and these bits here we're not really interested in those there we go okay so that's junk yeah but it's not going in the bin it will get recycled properly so what we have here is the terminals see all that corrosion on there so I just need to go and wire brush those up but what we'll do when that's done is that will go in there like that see it drops in very nicely yeah and a few dabs of hot glue and then we've got two battery terminals there and there it fits really nicely doesn't it so I'm just going to go off and off camera and wire brush all that lot up 
whilst it's easy. So whilst we're waiting for the hot glue gun to heat up, let's have a look at this battery pack. Okay, just had um, a connection there that was shorting out, just touch it, well, just trying to. So now, to remove these, you've got to be quite careful. I think we are, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just putting the screwdriver underneath there. There we go. You've got to be really careful not to puncture the cases. Let's just remove that tab there. Right, let's get the last one off. Right, what do we got here? Just roll that off. And that one. Okay, put those out of the way. Right. Let's just zoom in a bit. You can see we've still got part of the old tab on there. So what I'm going to do is grab hold of it and just roll it really gently. If you raunch these off, you've got a tendency to pull a hole in this bottom and you definitely don't want to do that. So we've just got to just gently there. Okay that looks alright and that ends alright. So what we do now is just Tap any loose bits down because as you will see later on we need a nice flat surface there okay I'm gonna sort the rest of these out and I'll get back to you when that's done okay I put this pack together and marked where the ends are so that's the positive so we go positive down to there that's a negative which goes to a positive which goes to a negative which goes to a positive which comes the other end is a negative which goes to a positive which comes to the other end that's a negative that goes to a positive and that is the negative out you might have to watch that several times to get the idea but because it's five, you've got to start in the right place. Now then, you're going, how do we link these together? Are we going to solder them? Well, we could do. Where's the positive? So that is the first tab. So we don't need to deal with that at the moment. And we need to put that across there like that. And we can solder it. Or, I watched a video by... Dark Kevin, yeah, and I will put the link up somewhere along here somewhere. I'll put the link up, and I watched his video, and it was very good, well put together, fairly clear and concise, spot on, loads of information, and it's about spot welding these together. So what we need to do, and I've got some here, and I bought this recently. And this is nickel strip, battery strip, pure nickel rather than nickel plated. And it's 8mm by 0.15 of a mil. Yeah. And it's all about that size, so I'm just assuming 
that that will do the job so we put that on there like that so right so dark kevin yeah showed me let me zoom out how to mail how to make this battery spot welder so it's not my idea I was originally using this battery which is a 700 amp hour and I think that proved to be a bit too beefy so I've gone to this slightly smaller battery it's the spare one off my uh, dead Honda yeah and so effectively what we've got and this is just I had this which is some sort of weird car battery terminal thing where it's all like brass anyway there was a hole there and then I went into my box of miscellaneous uh, solenoids and lo and behold I found this one 12 volt one all the rest were 24 and 36 and 48 forklift stuff but I found this so effectively what you've got is some thick cable from either terminal down to that there and I'll just I'll change things around there we go and just on the end of those terminals we have two bits these are the um, positive and negative live and neutral from a 2.5 mil twin and earth cable the gray stuff um, one thing I learnt is they do need to be short like there's my thumb yeah, if you if you make them any longer when you press down they tend to bend and it's a pain in the neck so we've got a slightly smaller battery here um, and the setups the same and what happens is I just dab this wire on there and the solenoid connects okay let's give it a go so I had a block of wood somewhere that raises them up and then we just put that there okay and I will dab the wire on and it seems to have spot welded as required there we go Whoop. that didn't go so it's not quite as clinical as you imagine let's try that that's done well there we go and um, one thing I found out that's great good isn't it is that you don't want to use a fully charged battery you want one that's sort of there's plenty of power in it but it's not really high on volts in fact let's just see what the volts are on this battery now yeah 12.5 if you're on 13.6 or something like that uh, it tends to zap too much out tends to be a little bit too strong
that's great that's great I'm pleased about that right and so we continue again have we got this right so we've got a negative there which goes to a positive which goes to a negative which goes to a positive which goes to a negative which goes to a positive which goes to a negative and that one goes from there to there okay So I forgot to put the camera on there. Never mind. We've got we've got things in order. So uh, let's just try that. That was a bit of a zap. Well, it didn't uh, burn through. Seems a bit variable. Sometimes you dab this on and it makes a big spark. Other times it doesn't. So there we go now we need a tab on there and a tab on there to solder to so let's do this one a little little short tab what I'll do okay There we go, and we'll put another tab on there. Yeah, yeah. There we go, grand. Right, let's sort that out. I'm going to solder some wires on there and we're away. So, there we go. Now, now for the soldering bit. And this is a soldering iron that I got out of the scrapyard. I thought, oh, that looks like an interesting soldering iron. And um, it didn't work. Uh, all right, okay. Nothing uh, unexpectedly there. And then I thought, I'll just check the fuse. Because it still had the plug on it. Somebody would robbed the fuse out of it. So I put a fuse in it. And away it went. So that's a... Uh, bit of a tale of perception rather really isn't it and expectations so that's one that's the negative let's get the other end uh, tinned up Come on, warm up. There we go. That'll do. And then the positive, which is there. Warm that up. Right. 
There we go. And turn that. a little bit long solder that on there okay oh soldered the um, tin the other end Perfect. Right. There we go. So, two screws, one screw. Yeah. So let's just I think we just need to uh, improve that a little, little bit a little bit of cable shorting out there that's better so we put that in there like that okay and that will fit like that will fit like that so which is the positive and which is the negative it does say that's the positive there they are uh, responsibly enough to mark it on the outside so that would be the bottom so that's the positive so this one will come round to there And if we can put plenty of lead or cable on this, then it won't be a struggle putting it together. From what I remember, these do take a bit of soldering, a bit of heat to get going. Come on. I did wire brush these up. There we go. Good. That's a bit more. Let me just go and wire brush that up again. Right, let's try again. Stick some heat in there. There, that's better. Maybe I forgot to wire brush it up. That's perfect. Right. Okay. Which was the positive? That's the positive. So that's the positive. So therefore that, which is too long. That bit's too long. Okay. This one will go there, and so it will want to go there. 
that way like that and that is too long warm that up solder that on there because that's quite a big heavy duty copper cable that heat was transferring up the, the cable so there we go and then this will go like that so is there anything that can short out I think we could probably do with a bit of something over the top of that how about this that will do. That looks better. Except tell you what we'll do, we'll put a bit of tape on that. Right, let's just put a bit of tape on that connection there. Just to make sure. There. So tuck that in there. That's only because that's at the top of the pile, as it were. Now we've got a screw hole there and a screw hole there that looks good okay so and then we just want to uh, make sure nothing gets in the way there we go pop a screw in there They haven't scrimped on the length of these screws. So quite nicely designed in a lot of ways. What I can't understand is both drills are identical and they've got identical model numbers. So why on earth would they have, would one of them have a NICAD battery? sort of NICADs went out with the arc so I don't know just a bit weird right where's that drill there's the part number on that drill and the other one is identical so here we go Oh wow, ah, plenty of power. Right, I'm just going to go and first of all black out NICAD. In fact I'll probably put um, black out everything apart from A to differentiate this one from the, the other one. And then I'm going to put it on the bench power supply and trickle charge it as I've said before. And there we are brought back to life but with the proviso that you must look after it you must use your brain rather than just hammering it to death right so hopefully you've enjoyed that and gained a bit of uh, information or knowledge I'm pleased that I fixed it just weird that they were NICADs this far on I don't imagine this is a very um, uh, old drill so just odd anyway hopefully I will catch up with you soon cheers for now